All right, the work of with them a faithful man. Now come on down to verse 6. Come on down to verse 6. And notice in verse 6 what God looked for. God looked for alertness. What the Lord was looking for was alertness. He wanted people wide awake. He wanted people that meant business. He gives them a test there. Do you ever think about what that test is? What kind of a test that thing is? That test right there is a test where he says, come down to the water. And they go down to the water. And when they get down to the water, he says, all right, tell them to get a drink. And they get a drink. And most of them get down like this and put their head down like this and get the water like that. And 300 come down there and kneel and get the water like this and lap it like a dog. They pick it up like this and do this. And he says, I'll take those 300. Lord has some strange psychological tests, doesn't he? You know what that test is? That's a test for alertness. God knows if the guy is down flat in his belly with the head stuffed in that water, his primary concern is his own personal comfort. He wants water. And that guy kneeling down there like this is looking for the enemy. You're not going to catch him unawares with his head down, with his back towards you. He's looking. He's ready to fight. The guy that comes down there and lapped it and looking around and looking for the fight, and the guy with his head down is looking taking care of his belly. That's the difference. You take when God wants to pick a bunch of people for, to serve him, he's not picking those that are interested in self-esteem. Listen, if you're interested in self-esteem or self-recognition or self-glory, the Lord's army is not the place for you. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And should I brush on his cause or fear to speak his name? Must I be kind to the skies and flowery beds of ease? Love that fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? God looking for alertness, wide awake, a fellow who's ready for the fight. That's what he's looking for. You take of the Betty O landings, that's a terrible landing uh, in, in uh, Saipan or Tara, one of those uh, South Sea Islands, Marine outfit hit there, and one young Marine came up to the seawall at Betty O. I'm pretty sure it was uh, Saipan, and he came up there, and the, and the Japanese were slinging grenades in there, and that kid stood in that seawall and picked off four grenades in the air, coming at him by hand, fielding them back before the fifth one got him. But he fielded four of them right back and saved his buddies and got them again over the wall without getting blown all to pieces. You got to be alert to catch four grenades out of the air and pitch them back. You got to have your sense about you, man. Your reflexes have to be in good condition. <laughs> and that's what the Lord's looking for. No trouble with the average Christian. He doesn't pay attention to what God says. Or if he does, he doesn't put the right amount of emphasis on it. He thinks, uh, he thinks it's to be taken lightly. There's an outstanding illustration out in the Old Testament and a very strong illustration. You wouldn't think anybody would be able to miss it, but boy, they miss it. Back in the Old Testament, there's a king named Joash. And he's called up to Elijah's bed right before Elisha dies. And he's called up there with his bedside and called up there to, for a final message. And Elisha says to him, he says, get your bows and arrows. He gets his bows and arrows. He said, open the door eastward toward Assyria. He opens his window eastward toward Assyria. And the old man says, he says, uh, picks up a arrow there and hands the arrow to him and he says, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance against Syria. And he puts it in the bow, and Elisha puts his hand in the bow, and Joash shoots that arrow out. And he says, now take the arrows and smite in the ground with them. And Joash picks up the arrows and bam, 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 three times in the ground. And, and Elisha says, you fool, you fool, you crazy fool. You lost your country. What for? You can tell me how many times they hit. Listen, didn't I tell you that arrow was the arrow of the Lord's deliver deliverance? Yes. Well, you smote three times the ground of them arrows, you're going to whip the Syrians three times, and after that, they're going to clean you out. He wasn't alert. He didn't get it, you see. His mind was, you know, off someplace else while the preaching was going on. If he had any sense, he'd have picked those arrows and beat on the ground until he broke them but he didn't take the message seriously. You know what God's looking for? God's looking for alertness. You know what I'm drawing you here? I'm drawing you a picture of the incident that happened at uh, Smolensk after the Russians recovered from Stalingrad and came through and got on the offense in the Battle of Kursk, biggest tank battle of the war, and started through. And at Smolensk, there was one young lieutenant there, a German lieutenant, about 19 years old, and that old boy had lost his gun crew and shot all his mouth around and shot all his 88 rounds and was finishing up with a, a schmizer 
And when they came into the gun pit, he was sitting there with his, like this, with his head down, his arm in a sling, and blood coming off the other arm, and about 20 below zero. And when they came, those Russians put the bayonets on him and told him to raise his hand. Hand a You know what that old kid did? 90 years old? He looked up and he went, <coughs> and spit on him. I had to kill him. So that was a dumb thing to do. Yeah, but boy, what a gesture. What a gesture. Man, what morale. Man, what guts. You say, well, what a stupid thing to do. Is that so? Is that so? And the world comes to me and the devil comes to me and says, pull him up. <laughs> you see? I've never been able to, I haven't, I've been saved 40 years. I haven't got some of you people figured out yet. Some of you do, some of you I don't. I don't understand you. I don't see how a saved Christian can lack the morale and courage and fortitude and endurance of an unsaved soldier serving a devil. I haven't got to figure it out yet. God's looking for alertness. God's not looking for all this stuff that goes, all this Hollywood stuff. I've been in places, I've been in places for youth places. I thank God Brother Donald has led you young people in the right way, boy and got you on some spiritual tacks. I mean, most of the young people out there I've been in the past, they have the Youth for Christ stuff, they have the you, you have soldiering. You couldn't, you couldn't get any, you couldn't even connect it. I've been in meetings where they brought in a horse in the middle of the, of the song service with a blanket on him saying, Tony the Gospel Horse. <laughs> Tony the Gospel Horse. What a thing. Well, these nuts up here brought an elephant in a Youth for Christ meeting. And right in the middle of the thing, it believed itself on the stage. It really did. It really did. I've often wondered about that. <laughs> like the Lord saying, I'll show you what I think of this mess. 